Alright guys, so this is the jerk. This is just the chess passers and it's only Alex recording today because Jerry's not here today. So yeah, basically. So this is gonna be one of the two tactical videos that we're gonna be putting up, and they're both gonna be Petrosian videos. Petrosian is just a grandmaster that that was really tactical and it was like really really cool. Okay, but he but he's dead now. So anyways, as I was saying, tactical. So there's gonna be two tactical videos on um, both of Pet whose Petrosian's games are. So yeah, let's just get this game started. This is the game between T Tigran Petrosian and Yesov Estrin or something like that. So it starts off with C4. Just basically this after G6, Knight to C6, and this is the English attack. It's the fourth most popular flank opening with C4. And basically, Bishop G3, most popular moves in the English. D4, and then do that. And then pawn D4. If you're wondering why Protrusion just gave up a free pawn, well, it's not a free pawn. Because the knight cannot take. Because if the knight takes, then the bishop will take the pawn on B7. And it will be attacking the black rook, and like after like... Rook to b2, then black would just have a better position because this knight is not going anywhere because it can't go here. Just, just basically, he doesn't want to take there. So instead, he plays queen d7, developing another piece. b5, attacking the knight and trying to get the knight to this square or some other square where it's not defending the b7 pawn. But of course, there are the square a5 and d5 and d8. So he chose to move it to d8, just for the sole purpose of protecting the b7 pawn. But now, after knight to f3, the, the attack on the b7 pawn is over because the, it's being blocked by the knight. Okay, so he can kill his bishop, and after knight to g5, this is a double attack, with the bishop attacking this and the pawn attacking this. So of course the knight is worth more points, so he had defended with bishop to b2. And after a pawn trade in which the queen gets developed in, we have a6. But since Petrosian is kind of an attacker guy, he just aims for an attack on the king's side with h4. And after the pawn trade, he moves knight to e7. And now Petrosian wastes no time, plays queen d2, and after the castle on the king's side, h5 immediately. Pawn takes, rook takes, and now it's it's an attack on the h7 pawn, so bishop to f5 was played. But then, of course, there's a simple way to get it out of this bishop to e4, so bishop is forced to move back to g6, where it's protecting this pawn at the same time attacking this rook. And if you're wondering, no, this, this bishop cannot take this bishop, because then he could just take with this... And, well, yeah, there's still a protector of it. Well, basically, just you just can't take it. I'm just, like, messing myself up. Okay, so in this position, Petrosian made a really good tactical combination move thing. So just take a moment, see what the move was that Petrosian made. Okay. I'm going to give you 10 seconds. Okay, so as you may have noticed up here, there is a notepad with untitled. And you fold it down. Ta-da! The move sequence! Such a coincidence! Okay, so... Um, yeah, I have no idea why. Whoops. Whoops. Oh my goodness. Okay. So, um, it's down here. Really? No pad, do I have to do this to me? Okay. Finally. Now, as I was saying, so the move is Rook Ticks on H7. Seriously? Really, guys? Oh, my goodness. This is why I hate using a notepad to record this. I might have some old memorized notes right now. Okay, rook takes on h7. And then bishop must take on h7. Because, you know, it could just 
It's just common sense, okay? If you know how to play chess, it's common sense. After bishop takes on h7 again, the only move is king to h8. Petrosian castles on the queen side to prepare to like bring his rook here, his bishop here with the discovered attack on the queen and the king at the exact same time. So of course um, he has to defend this with knight to g8. And now after rook comes to h1, the knight blocks it with knight to h6. Okay, so knight to d5 is trying to bring another knight in the game. F6 was played, so now knight to e4. Knight to e4, rook takes on a2. And now rook takes on h6. Then after bishop takes back on h6, queen takes on h6 with the threat of checkmate. Wait, no, that, no, he can take the bishop. But still, it's a, it's a bishop for a rook. It's not a good, um, trade. I, th I believe, no, there's just no checkmate, um, things but still it's a pretty bad situation for black to be in i'm guessing this is a big threat because it's there's only one way to defend it and then after rook takes here you can just take with the knight again and there will be a threat of checkmate on f8 because this knight protecting the bishop it also gives a tempo in the black kind <clears throat> anyways after queen takes on h6 queen to g7 Wishing for a queen trade at this time. Of course, you're not going to give it to him. So, queen to h4 was played. Just completely attacking this. It's quadruply attacking this pawn. There is no good way to defend this pawn at all. This rooks all the way down here. There are already things defending this. This bishop is basically like this dead hook onto it so there's only one possible move in this position to not completely lose the game and that was what Yakoi played he resigned because there is no good way that's the only good way to avoid any embarrassment and stuff because he's playing Petrosian so yeah this is my first part of the tactical combinations game by Petrosian. I hope um, episode 2 will come out soon. And be sure to check out all of the other videos by the Chess Patsers. And goodbye.